As founder members of the Football League, Burnley's place in history is assured. The club has been through many ups and downs during its long history. The 60s saw the club in the top flight of English football, which was then League Division 1, regularly playing teams like Spurs, Arsenal, West Ham and Manchester United. Many famous names helped keep Burnley at the top end of English football. At this time, one of Burnley's most famous adopted sons was Irish international Jimmy McElroy. If this corner flag could talk, it could have <clears> many <throat> tales that it could tell. <laughs> What about telling us, you know, some of what Jimmy Mack's magic feet? This is one of my, uh, I would say, favourite uh, corner flags. I could imagine it saying, now that I'm here, not you again, because uh, I've done my share of dancing uh, in, in, in these corner flags. Uh, in fact, uh, if I'd shown the same skill on the, bo on the ballroom floor, I'd have been a <laughs> professional dancer. <laughs> you came to Burnley in 1950 as an 18-year-old. Was it a big decision to leave Northern Ireland? And how did you find out that Burnley had an interest in you when you, at the time you were playing for Glen Turin? Well, it, 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 um, it wasn't a big decision to make because every Irish youngster <coughs> wants to play for, a, for an English club. And uh, when, when I learned that uh, uh, Burnley wanted me, I jumped. I never thought for a moment that uh, about leaving home. I just couldn't get on that boat quickly enough to to uh, to come here. No Burnley Football Club Hall of Fame would ever be the same without the name of Jimmy McElroy. At that time, he was one of the greatest players in the world. In the late 1990s, the club renamed the stand at the B Hall end of the ground the Jimmy McElroy Stand. <laughs> It's been around 30 years since the Clarets have graced the top end of English football and this incredible season of 2008-9 they have fought like British Bulldogs to return to their rightful status, the Premier League. It is also appropriate that during this great season, Jimmy McElroy was awarded freedom of the borough. It was May the 9th, 1987, when Burnley almost dropped out of the Football League altogether. The club found themselves having to beat Leighton Orient on the final day of the season to stay in the 4th Division. Two more Burnley legends were the Claret saviours on that day, Ian Britton and Neil Grewcock. Yes, it's always nice to come back and see some old friends that I made during my time here. Neil Grewcock scored nine goals for Burnley that season, the last of which will go down in Burnley folklore. It was the opening goal of that last match, which became known as the Orient game. Right, yes, I scored the first goal, Burnley's first goal against Orient, yep. And it was Ian Britton who scored the winner. Um, yes, yes, uh, obviously. Uh, a great ball from Neil uh, who crossed the ball in there. I was fortunate to get on the end of it and head it in. Uh, it's to great relief, I think, to all the supporters and directors of Burnley Football Club. I was at Blackpool for three seasons where we got promotion, and uh, Brian Miller asked me to come to 
and wanted to sign me, so I played a, a couple of games in pre-season and uh, signed then. By 2008, the Clarets were a well-established outfit in the Championship League, but the first two games were a bit of a disaster, losing four goals to one at Sheffield United and 3-0 at home to Ipswich Town put our lads at the foot of the table. That first home game against Ipswich had quite a spectacular opening to the proceedings, and that's not just the match ball being delivered by the Red Devils parachute team. There were seven parachutists, six landed perfectly on the field, and the seventh decided to try to get a better view of the stadium by landing on the roof of the David Fishwick stand. Unfortunately for him, health and safety laws did not allow this cunning plan, and the fire brigade were called to rescue him, delaying the game by one hour. Eight months later, the Clarets were in touching distance of the playoffs. On May the 3rd, the last game of the season, Bristol City were at the wrong end of a 4-0 thrashing. This put Burnley into the playoffs. As guest at a special luncheon at Turf Moor after the success over Bristol, Burnley fan Richard Moore, who played Jarvis in Emmerdale, showed his feelings on this historic result. This is from my mate of mine who was a Chelsea fan, wasn't Chelsea? Well, I know, but there you go, we're all friends. Many congratulations, dodgy moment just before your first goal, but all okay now. Should have had a bet on Cardiff not making it. What price? Burnley, Preston at Wembley. There we are. I, I hope you all had a great afternoon. How could you not have? Unless you're a Bristol City supporter, I suppose. But uh, there we are. Fantastic, isn't it? Just great. What a good feeling. What a good feeling. Have a great night and uh, don't suck too much air. Well done. <laughs> With Birmingham and Wolves getting automatic promotion, Preston, Sheffield United, Reading and Burnley were to play for that final vacancy in the Premier League. The Clarets were paired with Reading, home and away. The first game to be played at home on Saturday, May the 9th. The club encountered unprecedented demand for tickets for the playoff games against Reading, with lengthy queues forming at Turf Moor from early bank holiday Monday morning. Some fans had even camped out all night, as seats went on sale for both legs. Do you think uh, they'll make it to Wembley? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, got to do it, oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you think Burnley will get in the Premiership? I hope so. <laughs> of they will. The first leg was settled in the Clarets' favour with a penalty converted successfully by the master, Graham Alexander. In the second leg, it only took six minutes into the second half before Burnley doubled their aggregate advantage. Seven minutes later, Burnley effectively killed the game off with a brilliant goal by Thompson. This result caused more cues. This time, some had come prepared. Since six o'clock. Oh, I'm proud of you. Four <laughs> hours. <laughs> the media also made an appearance. I've queued up early before, but we'll get here early if we can. But of course, it was the big prize. The reason? The Clarets were going to Wembley. Claret certainly did dare to dream. At six o'clock on Monday the 25th of May, hundreds of cars, coaches and all types of transport were on their way south.
On our way down, we decided to stop off at Watford Gap service station. Whilst there, I had a friendly word with a very nice Sheffield United supporter. How do you think you're going against Newcastle next year? Oh! <laughs> I nearly fell for that one. Meanwhile, back home, the streets of Burnley were empty. Quite surprising who you bump into on these special occasions. Is it Eric Cantona? Oh, is it? Eric oh, sorry. No, no, yes. No. Yes. It used to be Eric Delaney. Mr. Knowles, sir, how are you? Is anymore. There you are. Wembley Stadium was in pristine condition for this historic game. Burnley Town Hall clock says three o'clock. Kickoff time at Wembley. Then, 30 minutes after kickoff, the world stood still. The following day, 40,000 Claret fans swamped the streets of Burnley to welcome their heroes home. The media were also out in full force. Nobody could have been more thrilled or excited than Tony Blair's press secretary and lifelong Claret fan, Alistair Campbell. The town hall was full of radio and television reporters, some of them going out live. Back at Turf Moor, the journey to the Town Hall is about to begin. Lucy Meacock joins in the fun as she prepares to interview Club Chairman Barry Kilby for Granada Television. At last, the coaches start their journey to the Town Hall. Back at the town hall, the media prepare for the arrival of our Burnley heroes. I'm on the 
balcony of Burnley Town Hall and behind me you can hear thousands of Burnley fans celebrating our promotion to the Premiership and I cannot begin to tell you what it means to me, what it means to Burnley. I've been supporting Burnley since we were league champions, reigning league champions the first time I saw them in the early 60s and we went all the way down till 1987 we had to win to stay in the league. To have come back to this, to have done it by playing great football, to have done it, that's the flag being thrown out before we, the bus comes round the corner. And to have done it by playing great football, to have done it with this fantastic support, I tell you, this is one of the best. Yesterday was a great day when we beat Sheffield United. Today is, frankly, even better. And sometimes, you know, football and sport, they can do things that government policy can't do. They can generate real sense of confidence and hope in the future. And, uh, you know, I think that's what's happening here in Burnley today. I certainly hope so. Is this better than Scotland beating France? It's right up there, mate. Oh, I can't lie. It's absolutely fantastic for everyone. Do you think if this had happened with Preston that you'd have got this sort of reception? You're trying to get me in trouble, isn't it? <laughs> it's been 33 years since we've been in that top division and we've stuck it out in a famous Orient game where we nearly went out of existence. We stopped it there. Gradually move forwards and upwards, and now we've there. Uh, we've done it. Thank you, everyone. Otherwise, uh, yeah, everything you can't describe it. It's the best feeling in the world. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Stood to his own yes, we look to add to the quality we have. But what I will say is that each and every game will be positive and we'll try and go and win in an entertaining style. And just put us out of our misery, uh, you'd rather be here than Celtic. to your question, it's hypothetical anyway, but what I would say is, since the first day I came here, I mean, you see the fans tonight, they've got behind me, they've got behind the team, and again, it's, the players go and deliver the part, each and every day they're a joy to work with, but equally, they do that because they know they've got an unbelievable support through thick and thin behind them, and it's so valuable, thank you very much.
Yeah, I was right. I told him he kept on looking at me with my eyebrows, but I knew. I said, you know, it's a group of players that believe in themselves. We were confident all week. We knew we were going to win the game. You know, we went overconfident, saying the right things, doing the right things, training very well. And it's, you know, we've produced it on a big game on Monday. Thanks for the celebration, but there's a fantastic sense of optimism about the whole place, isn't there? That you're not going to that Premier League to make up the numbers, that this group together, players, staff, fans, are going places. Yeah, I think so. I think you've looked at the, the games we've played this season against Premier League teams. We've more you know, amassed ourselves and the gap of one Santa Fe and Nick Leicester is so enthusiastic. You know, he believes in the group of players he has and, and I'm sure he'll bring a few players in to help us and you know, I'm sure we'll create ourselves very well in the Premiership. At the beginning of the season, the odds for the bookies saying that you were going to get relegated this season, you've overturned those odds, you think you're the favourites to go down next season. <laughs> How do you feel you'll do next season? Well, we'll, we'll give it a very best shot. I mean, I don't think we're under any illusions that we were everybody's favourite to go down. I think a few people have tipped us last year in the Championship, albeit we're now at a superior level as we know, best league in the world. But what an absolute challenge, unbelievable challenge to look forward to. And that's what we'll do, we'll get about our work and try our very best. Well, the Clarets have had a terrific season. They dared to dream and it became a reality. Let's hope they can progress in the Premiership to a respectable position. Going off the first match of the season at home, things look good. On the end of this, Patrice Evers there. Blake! Oh, what a goal! Oh, my goodness me, Robbie Blake, what a strike! It's been a big night for Burnley, are you pleased with the way it's gone? Delighted, absolutely brilliant, superb. It's been wonderful, I've stood out here for two and a half hours and everybody's been absolutely. such good company oh, and brilliant. good fun and well behaved, it's yeah, been brilliant. We at Wembley yesterday. No, unfortunately we couldn't go, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, we watched it on the telly and uh, we're here tonight, yeah. It's been great, good. great bunch Thank of lads. The Clarets have a formidable history behind them and with the well-established influence of former heroes and the guidance of people like Barry Kilby and Owen Coyle, Burnley Football Club will, I'm sure, be regular members of the Premiership. Next target, Europe.